used your chat box. This is something that seems to be obvious, but there are a lot, and I mean a lot of people, who don't pay attention when they need it, or just don't use it at all. It's at least once a day I see someone say knots and crosses or mole over and over and over and over, and they never realize they're doing the wrong thing. They're too busy not even looking at the chat box that the game literally tells them to use. Then there's also dungeons. People can be attempting to communicate with you the entire run, and you could be completely ignoring them. Turn on tank stands. Here's how this boss goes. We need to do A, B, and C. Any number of things could be coming your way, but because you're ignoring the chat, you're not getting any of it. So in this hallucinogenic, spike-created video, I shall be going over the chat box and everything you can do to make your chat box easier to use, because you really should be using it properly. This is your chat box, obviously. This here has a number of buttons that are all important to making use of the box easier. In the top right is a relatively hard to see arrow. Hovering the mouse over it will cause the arrow to turn into a double-sided line. This means you can now click and drag the arrow to change the size of the chat box. Depending on the size and resolution of your screen, you may want a bigger box. We'll come back to this in a bit, as it doesn't increase font size. The next button is next to the input box. You can click this to open a drop-down list of every chat option you have. Your basic say chat, party chat, free company chat, if you have one. Any chat you should have access to is here. It will even list every link shell if you have those. This is one of no less than three ways to change the chat that you are talking in. If you want to talk to your party, click this button, then click party, then get typing. The second way involves keybinds. The game includes a number of default keybinds for temporarily changing your chat to specific channels for a single message. I tend not to use these, but they are there. The only one I do use is slash tell, and that one might be good to keep around just because of how telling works in this game, which are whispers. The third way is probably the easiest, just Type the shortcut, slash P for party, slash FC for free company, and so on. This can be used to send a single message to the specified location, or change a default chat channel for you to send many messages. It's what I consider to be the ideal way of using the chat box, and at all times, it tells you what your default chat currently is. There's a bit of weirdness with link shells and cross-world link shells, a concept I will go over later. Link shell syntax is slash L number, replacing number with the actual number, so slash L1, slash L2, etc. Then cross world link shells is similar, it's slash L number appended to the end of a CW for cross world, so slash CWL1, slash CWL2, etc. Make liberal use of these shortcuts for easy chatting. Moving down more, we have General, Battle, and Event. These are three different chat tabs. If you click and drag a tab, one of two things will happen. If you click and drag General, you will move the chat box. If you click and drag any of the other tabs, you will make a second chat box appear and be dragged around by that tab, but without the input box. So you can even change the position of the box and have multiple chats scrolling at once. Got a specific chat you want to always have an eye on? Separate the tab, and ta-da! A good idea for party chat if you tend to like to look at party chat all the time. And next to the tabs is a plus. Clicking this plus will add a fourth tab. This fourth one is special in that it doesn't come with any default chat tabs. The names of the other three tabs don't matter either, because in a moment, we will be changing what those mean. But you can also actually change the third and fourth tabs to have different names by a right click. For now, let's finish going over the buttons here. Skipping over the gear, we have a sprout icon. If you see this buttons, that means you became a mentor, or were invited to, and purposefully accepted, an invite to the novice network. 
The Novice Network is a place for new players to ask veterans for advice, or even just casually chat while in queue. Maybe they will even speed that queue up for you. The quality of the people you run into can depend on the day and your server, but it's less toxic than your average free company on a good day. And if you want to leave, you can click the leaf, then click the leave button. Now let's go back to that little gear icon. This will open the chat log settings window inside of character configuration. All of these options in general, log details and notification sounds are important for maximizing the usefulness of your chat box. Starting with notification sounds, don't turn on sounds for something that there's a lot of activity in. So say chat in any towns or an active link show. However, a link show you keep for say, hunts, or perhaps even party chat, would be a great place to turn on sound notifications. If you're someone who tends to forget the chat box even exists, adding sounds to when you get a party message can make sure you see them. You can even change the sound between any of the 16 special sound effects, and even click the musical note to test the sound. Again, if you are someone who tends to miss when your party talks to you, this might be a good idea until you get used to it. Now, let's work our way backwards and talk about log details. I would recommend that, if you're in any sort of commonly active chats, turning on timestamps. You could even benefit from having timestamps on at all times. If something ever comes up that you need to check when something happened, or when you said something, timestamps is how you do it. And you need to turn them on per tab. Each tab will only have timestamps if you turn on timestamps for that tab. Every other setting in this window works weird. Let's just start with one thing at a time. Let's take log window transparency for general. Let's just turn it all the way down. Okay, the box becomes pitch black. Let's look at the battle tab now. It too is now pitch black. Now let's mess with the battle transparency. Nothing changes. But if we mess with the general transparency, battle changes. This is because of the tabs being docked onto the main window. When docked with general, all windows take on the same attributes as general, except for the timestamps as we went over. However, if we click and drag battle to be its own window, now it will take on its own individual transparency settings. And the font settings here work the same way. Font size is self-explanatory. It changes the size of the text in the chat box. The higher the number, the bigger the text we see. But again, general applies to every tab attached to it, and the individual tabs only have their settings applied when they are moved off of the main bar. It's weirdly specific, but that's how it works. Also note, you may want to also change the size of the box after changing the font. The bigger the font is, the bigger the chat box you will want to have. And now for the most important tab, the general settings tab. Most of this is extremely obvious, but let's go over like it isn't. Name display type changes how much of players' names is displayed for each message. This is kind of not too useful personally. I mean it is because of content creation and hiding player identities, but outside of that I don't see much use for it by myself. Making names be just initials is very useful for reading messages since player names aren't taking up half of a line, but also that makes replying to people hard. Many a time I'll be mid-typing a reply to someone's question, I will hit enter, and someone will ask something new right before I hit enter. They will think it was towards them, and then corrections will be needed to be made. If I, however, say a person's name in the message, well, who the message was for is now obvious. I feel like this is often a normal problem for everyone. Even in a small free company, you will likely have at least two people with the same initials. Which EJ are you talking to? Edmund Jive or Eve Jovial? 
Maybe you can just truncate the last name? First name is usually the best name to keep around, but there can be multiple Annas is the case that I have to deal with. So even then, that can be a bad idea. Also, in party content, for some reason people get offended if you don't call them by name and call them their job instead. So, astrologin is now an insult now. Don't call people an astrologin despite that being their job, but yeah, you might not want truncated names even for party content. Next is chat prompt font size. This changes the size of the text while you are typing, without affecting the main chat box. Display world name in chat log is when you see someone with a purple flower next to their name and the name of a server at the end. This is most notable in Duty Finder content. This is useful for knowing where party members come from. Enable lip sync during chat is when you see characters pantomime saying what you just typed. It doesn't actively do anything besides being very RP-like, very non-harmful to have on, and makes characters look more lively. Enable profanity filter will filter out bad words. Much like all profanity filters, it can be inaccurate or outright even filter out words the game uses. Display error messages when actions fail is actually nothing to do with the chat box. Has this sound ever happened to you? This is the error message sound from the system. When targeting an enemy and hitting a skill, you will get an out of range message because the skill failed. Turn off this error message and you won't get the error or the sound. Similarly, recast timer messages are when you hit a skill that is on cooldown. Altitude error messages has to do with flight. When you are at the map's max height, you will get told the amount can't fly any higher. This is that message. Now, enable log window item linking? This is entirely wrong wording. This does not at all affect item linking. You can link items and be linked items in the chat box as much as you want. Which, by the way, just right click an item and click link to attach to a chat message. But what this actually does do is turn off tooltips for linked items. When you hover over an item, tooltips will display. If you turn off this option, items linked in chat will no longer show their tooltips. This is a very specific thing to want, which I keep it on. There's no reason to have it off. Then we have timestamp settings. Changing the time settings will change whether the listed timestamp is based on your time zone or the server's time zone. You can also change time display to be military time, aka the inferior time. And then we come to the most important functions. Log text color lets you set the colors of basically every single possible thing. Chats, battle log messages, even announcements like gathering errors or other. You may want to find a nice quiet instance, maybe even unsync your way into a dungeon, and try out every chat you can to test for their color settings. Pick the ones you like the look of, or the ones that won't hurt your eyes, because some of them I don't like because they hurt my eyes. And now we finally come to why the name of each chat tab does not matter. Log filters. You can filter almost absolutely everything. Every individual thing that can appear in chat can be filtered on or off. Every individual chat affects you, your party, or random people get hit by in battle, the effects on enemies, and each tab can be changed individually. You can make your battle tab be only party and alliance chats. Third tab can be just for your free company chat, and fourth tab entirely all about link shells. Sort things any way you want to. Just have fun dealing with the battle log, it takes a long time to turn it all off. These things all alone basically are the most important features to deal with. This all should massively improve your experience with using the chat box, but there's lots more you can still do. There's a couple variable shortcuts that can give other players info. You can type in open caret 
POS, close carrot, like shown here. It will paste your current position on the map into chat. You can even click on it and see where it is. Clicking on it also places a flag in that location. You can place one manually with Ctrl plus right click or L1 plus R1 on a controller. You can then use open carrot flag close carrot in the chat box to post that flag, just like a position. I also mentioned item links earlier. Right clicking any item will let you link it into chat. This comes with open carrot item close carrot variables. You do have to actually hit enter afterwards for it to go through. And this only works one time before you have to link it again. Position and flag you can use an infinite number of times. Well, without spamming it. There's also open carrot quest closed carrot that works the same way. Can only be used once per link, but lets you link quests to people. There is one small problem in that it has spoiler prevention built in. If a quest is one a player has never picked up or completed, it will appear as question mark question mark question mark. It makes directing people to quest names harder, but it comes from the right place at least. To use this, just click the little button in the journal when you click on a quest. It's a tiny button, but it's it is there. Of course, there's lots of places to use all this info in, not just in party chats. There's the aforementioned novice network, free companies, and link shells. The first, I kind of covered everything of. The latter two, meanwhile, have a lot more to them. Free companies are this game's version of guilds in other games. They come with a lot more benefits than just chat. Link shells are just extra chat channels you can join be they public or private. Finding the right FC, or any link shells at all, can be hard. If you don't create link shells yourself, they're often hard to find any to join. However, if you open any of the social windows, there's a blue button in the top right. If you click it, you can open the community finder. It's unfortunately a browser window, so it's disconnected from the game, but it's an extra option for looking for extra chats or such. Just be sure to change your filters around any time you join a new one or such. Joining a lot of link shells, once again, at once, can get very busy for your chat box. Also note, players from other worlds cannot join your link shells. That's where cross-world link shells come in. You can invite anyone from your data center into a cross-world link shell. Make stuff like statics easier to handle. And let's finish off with a special note from me. Please communicate in content. I know it can be hard. People are scary. I hate people. I don't want to talk to people ever, which makes everything I do on this channel a contradiction. But I know it can be scary to communicate. But everyone should learn to be nice and work together. A tank telling the healer ahead of time that they will use their ultimate cooldown will make the healing job they do easier. And then there's also people wanting tanks to pull more. Use your words. If you go ahead and start pulling more mobs on your own without the tank, you're a jerk. Ask the tank to pull more, encourage them. Don't just silently take it into your own hands, which happens a lot. Just talk, damn it. You don't need to chat the entire run. But even small bits of communication can massively help out a run. Especially for players who are still learning. And for you people who are learning, you can't expect everyone to assume you need help. You need to say you want advice. Because as I said, people need to learn to be nicer. A lot of the time, if someone gives advice without being asked for it, they'll be attacked for it. If they give advice, they get insulted for giving advice. This is a real thing that happens a lot, so now the onus becomes on you. Say you need help, ask for it. And everyone needs to just be nicer, everyone communicate. And so if you don't ask for advice, many people won't even bother to try for fear of being attacked. But maybe, just, just maybe, if we actually start trying to talk even a little, 
just for the purpose of clearing the run, not even chatting, we'll have a better time with groups than we would otherwise. And for all you PlayStation players, just buy a cheap $5 USB keyboard, that's all it takes. Or, you know, you can be like that one elitist I know, who actively says communication is bad and if you aren't a mind reader, you're a bad player. You know, things normal people say. Thank you for watching this little overview of chat box and chat features. Please make use of them, please pay attention to which chats you are in, and please communicate with your party. This is an MMO. It may have a big focus on single player content, but you're still playing with other people regularly. If nothing else, consider it for them. But take care and may the power of Anna Nidhogg's lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra extra special thanks to Ayman Al Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, James, Kevin Lowe, Kyle Steinhauser, Mizella, Scott Stanley, and Vala LLC. Thank you all for watching, join my Discord, all that good stuff, follow me on Twitter, yada yada. Subscribe, ring the bell, and thank you for watching.